today we're, we're here. And uh, I'm now uh, here to do a little little one-on-one -on -one session with uh, David, and we'll we'll go through yeah the, the open web. And w when we were planning this session, we realised that actually that, that there's a, a great deal of informa yeah, information that people don't know already. So I'm going to ask uh, David to keep this reasonably in layman speak. But again, if you've got questions, as I, I will do on all all the panels over the next two, please feel free to ask any. Uh, degree of difficulty question and yeah, I will pass it to my learned friend here to ask. So if you've got hard questions or easy questions or there are no stupid questions as well so please feel free to, you're, you're here to contribute not just not just to listen. So uh, we'll start, I mean yeah, um, ozone, I know ozone really well, I know you, I know you are, there'll be people in the audience that probably don't know ozone well and what it is and where it came from and why it launched. So could you just do a, a quick view of ozone? Sure. Good morning, everyone. Um, ozone, uh, I guess the way that I would so, uh, describe ozone is it's a bit like the pr a premium version of the open web. Um, we're an advertising platform. Um, we were launched and built for brands, advertisers by four of the national newspapers uh, in the UK, um, The Guardian, News UK, Reach, uh, and The Telegraph. Um, and we built Ozone as a easy way to be able to access their audiences in what has now sort of become a very much a programmatic world. Um, we can come on to kind of, I guess, the reasons why um, sort of they did that, but um, uh, we're four years old. Um, so we launched uh, next month, it'll be four years. Um, uh, we've grown a lot in that time. Uh, we now work with, I guess, most of the agencies and many of the people. I can see quite a few in the room here today. Um, we set out to address some of the challenges with Ozone. Ozone was, was created uh, and actually launched um, the same month as GDPR was introduced um, in Europe. And I guess you know, the, there's a lot of reasons why we did that. Um, a lot of the challenges the open web has um, is around data um, privacy and data security. Um, and so we were born in a world that we knew the challenges that we had to overcome. So a lot of the challenges that people have around advertising in the open web, Ozone was built to address them. Um, so we see those as opportunities rather than challenges or threats that we've got to overcome. And, and Okay, so we'll, we'll, let's, let's go back to explain the open web again. But yeah, the, where, where, does, where does Ozone fit in, in the... I mean, Digital, Rob, Rob was here earlier for Jennifer, digital is, everything is digital now, but within the digital ecosystem, yeah. where do you sit? And maybe just sort of sure. so, your view of that digital ecosystem, where it is today in 2022. So um, I think the IB came out with some new numbers yesterday, so, um, uh, but the, the broad ratios are largely the same. So uh, if you have total digital advertising world, about half of that is search. Um, the remainder is display and a few other bits and pieces. But of that display world, about 10 billion in the UK um, is really dedicated to social platforms and the open web. Um, the open web component of that, and that's essentially everything you would get through your web browser or a publisher app, but for the most part, your web browser, any sites that you would see, um, that component in the UK is about 3.3 billion. Ozone uh, services the premium publishers within that ecosystem. Um, it's about 40% of that 3.3 billion number in the UK. So our job is to help those premium publishers, those that write long form content, journalistic content, uh, to get them to market uh, and get them in front of brands. Yeah, okay, and yeah, the, the, the web and the open web was supposed to be, yeah, make us all yeah, more efficient as, as marketeers, more uh, happier as consumers, yeah, but with yeah, ad fraud and transparency and yeah, all the other issues that, that we that yeah, absolutely. Again, you talk about the, the the news brands. The news brands are full of full of this. How do we find ourselves in this mess? It's uh, <laughs> a long answer to that. Um, I mean, I guess the first thing is uh, we can't forget that the it's amazing. Like you know, the fact that at the drop of a finger we can type into Google right. something and get an answer it's to a whatever great we could possibly It's a great point, yeah. It's the web amazing, is still right? amazing. Isn't it? it is still amazing. It's still amazing. Albeit that but it's fraught with challenges. You wouldn't believe that if you, if you, if you sure. read all the horror stories. Yeah. And I guess um, if you sort of start from a consumer's point of view, I guess there's, there's a couple of sort of challenges. One is 
it feels like it's a slightly older topic, but it still exists, the whole kind of concept of fake news and whether what I'm reading is actually true or not. But I think, unfortunately, a lot of the people here today are um, the culprits of the other side of it, which is it's actually a kind of a poor experience. There's lots of ads, there's lots of tracking, there's lots of stuff that just clogs up your browser that just doesn't make it a great experience. Um, and unfortunately, advertising is a big part of that. So from a consumer's point of view, yes, it's amazing and it's great, but it could be a lot better. Um, from an advertising point of view, and frankly, from a publishing point of view, um, I, I, it didn't really achieve, I guess, what it set out to achieve you know, 10, 15 years ago with when programmatic advertising sort of came into being and said that it was going to commoditize and bring to life audiences and reach audiences that we never thought we'd be able to get. Um, it sort of did, but um, the way in which the industry ended up being structured meant that uh, it didn't play out the way that we thought. And now we've got a version of the open web that is just not fit for purpose. Um, there's probably for two reasons. One is, uh, in, my, in my opinion, uh, one is, uh, accountability, um, and the second one is disintermediation. So if we start with accountability first. Accountability really means um, the work that's done and who does that work is not necessarily bearing the consequences of things that they might do. Um, now if we take, uh, and I, I'll try and keep it high level, but there are th if you think about the three basic technologies that exist to manage open web advertising, you have a demand side platform, which generally brands and advertisers use to put their budgets in and to run campaigns and activity. Um, on the publisher side, you have a sell side platform, an SSP, and they will essentially be managing uh, and, uh, the publisher's inventory uh, and helping that get to market. And then the third technology sitting uh, sort of to the side and on both sides is a DMP, which is managing all of that data. Um, so the audience data, the segmentation, how you target, and how you might measure. Um, now, because they, all of those technologies are siloed, um, they have an interest in trying to commoditize whatever it is that they do. So if I take an SSP as an example, um, they have a real interest in commoditizing and normalizing all publishers of the open web. So that they're all effectively the same thing. An MPU is the same regardless of whether it's on a Nepalese calendar site or whether it's on The Guardian. Um, but the truth is they're different. Um, and in, there's a real risk in oversimplifying and trying to standardize and commoditize. Um, we all want things to be simpler and easier, but the reality is sometimes they're not. Um, and so by normalizing and commoditizing, the SSPs largely um, reduced premium publishers down to a level closer to a Nepalese calendar website, um, but then raised the sort of the value for those lower, lower tier sites, which incentivize fraud, um, malware and stuff like that. And so, and on the buy side, um, for those that have ever sort of bought media through a, a demand platform, it's very difficult to buy the actual context and environment you want to appear in. You can target an audience um, of which the audience data is not necessarily verified, which is a separate sort of point, but you can't really target the environment very accurately um, that you're trying to appear in. And so that separation of responsibility means that Brands and publishers are actually quite disintermediated. We don't really talk to each other that much, although we're trying to. Um, we, in technology terms, we don't talk to each other very much. Uh, but what it means is that a lot of the issues that we have, there's no vested interest in trying to solve them. So fraud still exists. Um, there's a lack of transparency because each of these platforms have a vested interest in things not being transparent. Um, there's brand safety issues because you don't know the context in which you're, you're appearing. Um, and so there's just a, little, a sort of a, a list of problems that don't necessarily solve themselves. <coughs> and you touched on it. I mean, advertising is part of the problem. And, and again, and, yeah. and I think, uh, yeah, my mum always used to call a, a missing cat poster on a tree a, an advert. So yeah, so that was that was part of her advertising environment. And again, yeah. and you talk about yeah, so whether the Nepalese calendar example is is a yeah, is a good one, isn't it? Where suddenly there are bad ads all over the web, yeah. but yeah, it, tracking, which a lot of people in the room will, will yeah, they'll be, yeah, if they're agency side, they'll be selling, oh, we've got, we've got fantastic, yeah, tools. If they're brand side, they'll be asking for that, that tracking. That's, that's going to be, yeah, that's from a regulator point of view, that's, that's part of the problem. They're trying to protect consumers there. Yeah, yeah. so. How, how, yeah, what's the view on that and how can Ozone help with I, that? I think the, the, the root cause, so 
One of the big challenges that people hear about, um, and I'm sure you do with kind of your kind of agencies, is um, cookies are going away in Chrome and all our world's changing and what's, what, what's going to replace it and how is all this going to work. But most of the time people overlook the root cause of why things are changing. And the reason why things are changing is because um, uh, there's too much tracking and passing of personal data in the open web today. Um, and that's why regulators have stepped in. Um, GDPR was introduced. Um, uh, regulators stepped in and said, there's too much data being passed in the open web, um, in, in sort of general business as well, but the open web is kind of particularly targeted. Um, and it's not very safe for consumers. Um, so we want things to change. And so um, th there's, a, there's a, a, a big part of the ad, ad tech community and the advertising community that have said, okay, well, if that's going away, then how do I continue to do what I'm doing using third party ID vendors and doing this and that? And actually missing the point. The point is regulators don't want tracking to happen in the way that it has been in the past. So whatever new method or idea that comes up, they're going to come down on that too. Um, there's an opportunity. But, but, will, they, will, they stay, but will they be able to stay ahead of the regulator? Because that's pretty much what's happened since the web existed, is that the technology has stayed ahead of regulation. I mean, I guess I'd just challenge, well, why? Like, why, why, do, why, why invest in just trying to stay one step ahead of a regulator instead of addressing the root cause and saying, how do I work in a world that doesn't require me to have to track quite as much as what I do today? Um, there's been a, I think one of the challenges with this, this sort of disintermediation is an overuse of metrics, tech metrics, ad tech metrics, like, you know, click-throughs and conversions and, you know, um, measures of success that are not necessarily aligned to business outcomes. Um, the, we, we measure them because they're there, or they have been to date, they're about to go away in, in a large part. But if they do go away, then rather than trying to replicate it, surely it would be more sort of future-proof uh, to think of different ways of measuring outcomes. So, so why do regulators care so much? And again, how can you, how can you help you know, both publishers and brands yeah, stay on the right side of the regulator? Well, I guess um, it sort of comes back to my sort of earlier point, which is oversimplifying and trying to simplify something that's a little complex runs the risk of um, it sort of going south or going kind of sideways or unintended consequences. Um, we created Ozone specifically to work with premium publishers to help premium publishers bring their own businesses to life so that you can more easily access premium publishers and their audiences without having to necessarily find them in this open web uh, sort of mishmash. Um, because if it's easier to access them and, and reach them, you can have much better engagement, they can be measured in a different way, um, so success is measured differently rather than it being price-led and sitting alongside a Nepalese calendar website. Um, and I think, I mean, my, my sort of view is that the open web as we know it today is, is gone. Um, it won't survive. Um, it'll survive in some form, but it'll probably be accessed via Google, because Google have most of those published relationships and they have all of the tools and technologies to sort of sit on top of it and make sure that you're not buying fraud. Um, but if you're a retail publisher, which is a new category that's kind of emerging, if you're a premium publisher um, who we work with, um, there'll be other verticals that will kind of emerge, then as there is less data available, it's important that each of those verticals get to stand on their own feet um, and you can have confidence that you're buying, you, you have certainty in what you're buying and who you're accessing. Um, and that will require, I, th I think, the open web being largely smaller, long-tail publishers and these verticals emerging. And so I think that that's why, you know, you probably hear in, uh, and read in a lot of the trade press that their retail media wasn't really a thing until Amazon announced their results at the beginning of the year. Um, but actually it is a category. Um, it is a category that works really well, um, depending on what your product or your business is. But it works very differently to news publishing. Um, and so trying to normalize them and have the same success criteria applied to both verticals doesn't really make sense. So I think that that's what um, the, the impact of regulatory intervention and the, the less tracking uh, is going to deliver. Yeah, no, so, so I speak to yeah, lots of clients. So, so, I get, so there is a fear of 
Yes, yeah, a, a cookie, yeah, and the cookie's been dying for a long time, but yeah, when, it, when there is no cookie tracking, when there is no yeah, ID track, there, there's a fear that things are going to get worse, not better. Yeah. Is, that, is that your view? And, uh, yeah, um, can you help with that? Or? I, I, it depends on your point of view. Uh, you can see it as it getting worse and it's going to be more painful, or you can see it as an opportunity. Um, so I'll give you an example. There are, um, uh, there's one advertiser that we've worked with recently who... Um, so one of the things that we, and I would say this, uh, the context uh, and the creative message in context is a concept that's just been completely, largely ignored in programmatic advertising for uh, you know, last 10, 15 years. Um, and actually the way the decision making works is that that demand platform that you use will buy, uh, buy an ad slot and then it'll go and find a creative uh, to go and serve in that slot. So those two decisions are completely disconnected. Um, we had an advertiser who, who did actually sort of test against a benchmark of just random creative and uh, creative that was run in context um, and their brand metrics were five times what the baseline was. So if you actually put the effort in, uh, you do actually see an upside and a return. Um, but it requires effort. And so I think that that's that the opportunity as opposed with? to being a risk. Are you, are your team working with... Yeah, both technology and, and brands to try and make that get that, that five times uplift. We all like the sound of that. It, yeah, so the, the way that Ozone works is we're, we're a part technology, part company, part media company. Um, so um, to get the right results and to sort of do what we do requires working at the technology level, um, the campaign level, the brand strategy level. So all the way through working with the agencies, the brands, uh, the tech vendors. Um, to make sure that we get the right outcomes for ultimately the brands. Yeah, and the, the UK has been a leader in you know, digital marketing, e-commerce. Is, is, are, we, are we leading the way? Is, is the UK leading the way here? We've got, we got lessons that we can actually take. Or again, are you looking to take you know, Ozone anywhere else? Yeah, so um, I guess that the, the challenges that we have here are not, um, not unique. Um, I guess because of GDPR, we're a little bit ahead of a lot of other media markets. So in California, they introduced CCPA and other US territories will start to do something similar. Other Western mar uh, media markets are looking to do something like GDPR. So the UK has actually looked, um, pe people look to the UK as being a bit of a leader in terms of what's the right sort of compliant and sort of uh, um, uh, the right way to do things moving forward. So yeah, we do, I guess, have a bit of a, a, a leading role to play. Um, Ozone, uh, in terms when it comes to quality publishers, magazines and newspapers, they have the same set of challenges that we've had here. There's not really a business that exists like Ozone in any other market. Um, that's where I guess Ozone is unique. Um, so we're in the process of uh, it rolling out actually to, uh, uh, we've got a business starting in the US, in Canada, France, Spain. Um, so bit by bit, I guess. Nice, it's sort nice of success story. Anyone got a, got a question on anything regarding, I've, I've got, one here, got one here, if we can get a mic there, please. Mr. Marco Batozzi of Whaler. You can shout. You shout, I'll, I'll translate. Um, you talk a lot about tracking, and I don't want to call out any particular brands, but I think the user experience on something like the Independent, for example, is like the ad experience is like being bombarded by pop-ups and this yeah. and that and whatever. Do you have any responsibility for like making the experience for users as they go to these publishers a quality one? Because I think yeah. tracking is one thing, but like terrible the user, user experience is yeah. another. Yeah, you so, talked about it earlier again. That, so we've got a, um, um, I, I'm totally in your camp. Um, uh, less is more. Uh, we've actually got, um, the, but, but trying to convince a publisher who's, making journalists redundant rather than hiring them is a difficult question to say you've got to take inventory off your site. It will actually do better. Um, there, there have been studies over the years. Uh, New York Times, the FT have done sort of great studies to demonstrate what happens to your sort of your absolute revenues when you do make those kind of decisions. But it's a tough one for someone who's got to hit a quarter target. Um, we've got one of our publishers um, who we've done this with. Um, we took 70% of the ads off their site. Uh, they sort of 40% lift in revenue. Um, but that took 12 months. So they were someone who was willing to make the commitment uh, to do that. And yes, there was a drop for a period of time before it started to grow. Um, 
we've got a vested interest in wanting to do that with others, uh, but we've got to get them to believe as much as we do. Thank you. Good answer and a good question. Um, we're, we're already flashing that. Where did, where did that, where did that go? Let's, uh, let's give the audience, yeah, what, what are some key takeaways? What, what should we all be doing? If, uh, if, again, if that's perhaps UX is, is something for all of us to do. But like, I guess the, what, should, I, I, what I are give, the takeaways for people? I give the, the one takeaway, which is, a, which is an ask, would be um, I, I, I feel like change is inevitable um, and it's happening. Um, since regulators have got involved um, on the data side, things are going to change. So treat that as an opportunity, not as a threat. Um, embrace it, ask questions, in, engage. Those brands that we work with who have engaged and they are actively involved in the decision making around where their media is spent, um, reap the returns. Okay, thank you very much. Damon Reef, CEO of Ozo Project, thank you very much. Thanks very much, Greg.